biggest high school football rivalry in the state of New Jersey. Some have even said it's the biggest in the country. And honestly, who can argue with them? It's the granddaddy of them all, Bosco Bergen, or Bergen Bosco, depending on where you're from. The 2019 regular season edition went down under the lights at Granitale Stadium in Ramsey as the Crusaders and Ironmen faced off for the 73rd time. It's the first time, however, for Don Bosco's first year head coach, Dan Sabella. On the other sideline, Vito Campanile seeks his third win against the Ironmen. After a week of talk, talk, and more talk between these two teams who famously don't like each other, it was time to stop talking and kick the ball off in Ramsey. Bergen Catholic to receive and begin the drive under the watch of senior quarterback Andrew Bull, coming off a 141 quarterback rating performance against St. Peter's. But this drive, all about the run game. Amar Gist, and then Gist again, finding holes and penetrating the Don Bosco defense easily. The Ironmen really struggling to defend the run on the opening drive, as then it's Ryan Butler, the sophomore, coming off a 90-plus yard performance last week against St. Peter's, as Butler again moves the pile. And then from 12 yards out, Butler, the sophomore tailback, breaks to his left, and he's into the end zone to make it six, nothing, Bergen Catholic. And he's feeling quite at home in front of the Don Bosco student section. The raw emotion like this, what this rivalry's all about. Next play, point after is blocked by Arsheen Giles, and the Crusaders will have to settle for just six points off Butler's touchdown. On the ensuing return, Kyle Manungai looking to begin the Don Bosco rebuttal as he'll cut to the right with a burst of speed and get the ball up to the Don Bosco 35 to begin the drive with solid field position. Then Jalen Berger takes the handoff and goes to the left side. Looks as though the Ironmen are running on all cylinders to start this one, but then the snap goes past Jaquil Bats and the drive stalls out from there. Ironmen forced to punt. Crusaders trying to get Andrew Bowl going, but his pass is tipped at the line by Colin Ramos, and Nick Alvarado finishes the tip drill and picks off the ball. However, next play, Bats tries to throw down the middle, and Jed Denobili picks off his pass, so now the Crusaders going the other way like nothing ever happened. On that next drive, now into the second quarter, we'll switch sides as Andrew Bull looks across the middle and finds a Marcus who will take it to the house. 45 yards for a Crusader touchdown. Bergen Catholic now leads 12 to nothing. And on the next play, they'll go for two. Bull takes the snap, looks to his left, and finds Pearson Topia for a successful two-point conversion. 14 to nothing, Bergen Catholic. The rest of the second frame would see successful defensive stands from both sides, including this fourth down stop by the Ironmen. Then late in the second, Bowl looking deep along the left side for Pearson Tobia, who's unable to make the play, but draws the pass interference penalty to bring the ball down to the Ironmen 25 and set up a late 27-yard field goal by Giancarlo Carbonaro as time expired in the first half, making it 17-0 Bergen Catholic as they head to the dressing rooms. At the half of his first Bosco Bergen game, Dan Sabella makes a critical decision he will make a change at quarterback. He'll opt for the junior, Jake Robbins, to take over for the Ironmen in the second half. And from the first snap, Robbins proves to be infectious for the Ironmen offense. He'll fake the snap to Jalen Berger and take it himself to pick up significant yards down the middle. And suddenly, the Ironmen are driving to start the second half. Later in the drive, Robbins out of the gun, connects with Kyle Manungai, who puts some moves on the Bergen defenders and puts pressure on the Crusaders, getting the ball inside their 20-yard line. And 
Now the drive ultimately ends with a 28 yard Justin Frey field goal, but many more morale points scored on the Ironmen bench. The defense will buy in and immediately force a three and out. Next drive, Robbins out of the gun, looks to his right, finds Manungai who will push the issue into Bergen territory as the Ironmen keep driving until they reach the 19. And Jalen Berger does what he's known for. Burst of speed along the left side and in for an Ironman touchdown. It's now 17 to 10, Bergen Catholic. Now into the fourth quarter, Bowl and the Crusaders driving to put this one out of reach. And they'll do so till they get to the Bosco three. The ball goes to Ryan Butler, who hammers home up the middle for his second rushing touchdown of the night. Extra point will be no good, so it'll be 23 to 10 Crusaders with limited time left on the clock, and Bosco needing to get a score quickly. And now Robbins, who didn't even think he would play tonight, has to pull off some late game magic for Bosco to have a chance. He looks to the right side and finds Kyle Manungai, who picks up yards after the catch to get into Bergen Catholic territory. Later on that drive, third and 15, Robbins looks for Manangai, but just overthrows him, and that sets up a do or die fourth and 15. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Robbins connects with Robert DeLucia, who keeps the Ironman hopes alive, and then a few plays later, it's Robbins himself having a moment of glory. Junior quarterback's bootleg touchdown run makes it 23 to 17 Bergen Catholic following a successful extra point. But time is not on the Ironmen's side and they need to stop the ever potent Bergen Catholic rushing game. We got two timeouts left, we have to start banging them. They get another one, we can't stop. You understand? We need this, we need this, let's go. We are in a jump call. In the end, the Crusader ground game was simply too effective. Amar Gist gets the handoff to pick up the first down and deal the mortal blow to Don Bosco. The Crusaders beat their rival Ironmen in Ramsey, 23 to 17 the final. After the game, our student reporter Phil Bacacci caught up with Vito Campanile. Yeah, I think it means a lot to everybody, you know, involved in the rivalry, involved in this. It's, uh, in my opinion, the best rivalry in the country. I mean, this environment is uh, about as good as you can play a high school football game in. Well, yeah, our guys are so excited to be here. Uh, Danny did an awesome job with those guys. You know, Kyle's an elite, elite kid and an elite player. And uh, it's just, you know, it, it's just amazing. I've been around this game since 1984. Uh, you know, it's the first time I saw the rivalry. I, I was 10 years old, and it's just, it's captivating. You know, it's something unbelievable. You look at the names that have come through it, like uh, I saw in the paper today, just, uh, you know, to be a part of it is, uh, I don't know what else you could ask for in high school football. You know, I talked to the family, there's a lot of pressure from this week, you know, from both As coaches, how do you have to deal with that? You know, I, I don't think. I, I think it, it, it's just cultivating that process and making it competitive every single day of the year, so that this is kind of the norm. And try and make practice as hard as the game. You know, that's hard with a kid like Kyle and Jalen because you're not going to really get a chance to tackle those guys. But um, I think just being in this environment and having a, a senior-laden team and guys that have been through the the, the ringer like these guys have, uh, that, that kind of takes care of that. And they're just competitive people. You know, you come to these schools to, to push through yourself to be the best version of yourself. And I think both teams did that tonight. I mean, there, there was no quit in either group. For Inside Varsity Sports, I'm Rich DeCourt.